your quarter pull up. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to the Florida Supreme Court. The first case on our docket today is the Department of State versus the Florida Greyhound Association. Council? Good morning, Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. My name is Jordan Pratt. I'm a Deputy Solicitor General, appearing on behalf of the petitioners in this matter. After more than a year of deliberations, the Constitution Revision Commission, which convenes only once every two decades, pursuant to the Florida Constitution, proposed Amendment 13, which would phase out commercial dog racing in connection with wagering and leave other gaming activities by 2020 unaffected. Accompanying the proposal were the commission approved ballot title and summary. In this challenge to that ballot language, this court asks two and only two questions. The first question is whether the ballot title and summary disclose the chief legal effect of the proposed amendment. The second question that this, that this court asks is whether the ballot title and summary are truthful or instead are misleading. Because the ballot language for Amendment 13 fulfills both of these requirements, this court should uh, allow the voters the opportunity to weigh its merits and to cast their vote, and it should reject the respondents' improper attempt to interfere in the amendment process. Regarding the first requirement for validity, this court has made plain that ballot language must disclose the chief purpose of a measure, which it has also made clear consists only of its legal effect and not the policy motivations that may have prompted the proposal. Amendment 13 is a simple proposal, and its legal effect is very simple. What it would do is it would phase out commercial dog racing in connection with wagering. It would end racing of greyhounds and other dogs by peri mutual permit holders, but it would otherwise leave their gaming activities unaffected. And that's exactly what the ballot title and summary uh, uh, tell the voters that the proposed amendment would do. Now, the title just says ends dog racing, but you read those together with the summary. Correct, Justice Periante. This court's precedent is very clear that the voters uh, are presumed to read both the ballot title and summary, that they have both when they go into the ballot box. In fact, the title and summary serve different functions. The title is simply a caption, and the summary, of course, is a statement of the chief purpose of the measure of, or of its chief legal effect, to be more precise. So yes, um, this court is not uh, tasked with focusing separately on the ballot title and then separately on the ballot summary. It reads both together. So the idea is, so just so that I understand, I think the briefs have uh, explained this, that uh, if this passes, there will be no more commercial dog racing for wagering, but all those do the dog tracks that exist can still keep their other gaming activities, such as the, well, the slot machines and off-track uh, betting. And card rooms, precisely, that's correct. Card, but I don't, I've never. And, okay. and do they have until 2020 to finish this? Or I, I noticed that the Article uh, 12 under schedule says, uh, the creation of this section shall take effect upon the approval of the electorate. So it, it, do you, how does this work? Does it stop dog racing as of the passage of this or as of 2020? So Justice Quince, the, the ban takes effect after December 31st, uh, 2020. However, uh, peri mutual permit holders may at their option after the passage of this amendment, beginning on January 1st, 2019, cease dog racing and they won't well, have they any if they want to until 2020 right until uh, december 31st 2020 is the last day on which a licensed peri mutual facility operator can operate dog racing um, however january 1st 2019 is the first date on which those permit holders if they so choose can end dog racing that's why it's a phase out without any negative implications for their other permitted gaming activities um, so that's, that's why it's described as a phase-out. That's, that's an accurate representation. Now, the, the ban, the firm ban, takes effect after December 31st, 2020. So uh, the respondent's first argument for why they contend that this language is affirmatively misleading is um, they say that it uh, declines to disclose to the voters that it relates only to dog races that occur in the state of Florida. And that's true. The, the ballot summary title do not say that it relates only to dog races that occur in the state of Florida. But here we deal with a proposed amendment to the Florida Constitution. And this court has made clear that voters are presumed to have a certain amount of common sense. And of course, when, at a minimum, uh, we submit that the voters 
should be presumed to understand that when they vote on an, an amendment proposed to the Florida Constitution, that they're determining what the law should be in Florida, not in other states. The respondents- well, I think it's, Is it the idea that they could still bet on dog racing in other states? Sure, so the respondents uh, raise a related argument, uh, which is that um, under the proposed amendment, if enacted by the voters, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, state of Florida, that citizens of the state of Florida will still be able to cast wagers on out-of-state races. As I understand, I don't know if we're in the record, but I, that uh, the overwhelming majority of the dog race tracks are in Florida. In the country, that's correct. I believe that's, that's contained within the record, and there are certainly uh, aspects of the Commission's discussions uh, in the transcripts of the hearings. Is that what the discussed. argument that it didn't say that it's going to end dog racing at everywhere is that one of the reasons the trial judge struck this i don't understand the trial judge's order to have stricken it for that reason i understand the trial judge to have focused on their second but related argument which is the wagering on out-of-state races and that that attack on the ballot language fails for a related reason uh, not only do voters understand that under this amendment uh, races in other states are, are going to be unaffected but they also are going to read what the language says and what the language says is that the proposed amendment would phase out commercial dog racing in connection with wagering, not that it would phase out wagering in connection with commercial dog racing. So what the respondent's argument has done in effect is to take the inverse of the ballot language and assume that the voters are going to understand the ballot language to be the inverse of what it actually says. Well, really, even if someone thinks wrongly that it would affect the rest of the country, those that disfavor dog race dog racing at all as being inhumane would still vote for this. So I'm not sure, again, if that's an argument, I don't really... You know, I think that's a very fair point, Justice Perriente, that to the extent that the respondents argue that the ballot title and summary are misleading, what they are arguing is that the uh, amendment would not reach as far as voters would understand it to reach by reading uh, the ballot title and summary. So I think that it's probably true that a voter who uh, favors this proposal uh, would, would favor its legal effect. I, I think that that legal effect is very plainly disclosed by the ballot language. But even if they believed that it would accomplish even more, um, certainly a yes vote, uh, would, would, uh, th their vote wouldn't change in essence. Uh, but we're not, we're not resting on that contention. Uh, we, we contend that the ballot title and summary are not misleading. Um, they're not hyper-technical, but they don't have to be. The ballot title and summary, summary simply have to disclose uh, what the chief legal purpose or the chief legal effect of the amendment will be. And uh, they certainly do that. Um, so again, in regards to wagering on out-of-state races, the respondents assume the inverse of the ballot language, uh, which uh, this court's precedent makes clear that they can't do. Um, voters are understood to, uh, to read the language and then to understand that language in accordance with its ordinary meaning. But even if this court were to focus solely on the title, the title is not a false statement. And the reason for that is that plain meaning of the unadorned term dog racing entails wagering. And this court uh, can look to lots of different sources for that. We provided uh, lots of examples of news articles that employ the unmodified noun phrase dog racing uh, to clearly connote a gambling or a wagering activity. But this court doesn't even have to look to those newspaper articles. This court could simply look to the affidavit that was filed by uh, the um, respondent James Blanchard and to the website of the lead respondent in this matter, which posts some of those articles and press statements that describe the industry as, quote, the dog racing industry, uh, and that make clear that they're speaking about a wagering activity. Um, Mr. Blanchard's affidavit refers to a synonymous phrase, greyhound racing. <clears throat> Doesn't say anything about in connection with wagering, uh, and that's a synonymous phrase to dog racing. So even if this court were inclined to simply look at the ballot title, it's not a false statement. The plain meaning of dog racing entails wagering. Um, so th those, those are the arguments that the respondents have raised for why the ballot title and summary are affirmatively misleading. Um, but the trial court and the respondents also um, argued that the ballot title and summary are misleading by omission, that they're misleading because they fail to say uh, what they need to say. And those arguments are unavailing uh, for several reasons. The first um, uh, argument that the respondents and the trial court raise <clears throat> is that the ballot language declines to disclose um, the uh, initial statement of purpose that's contained within the proposed amendment. And that statement of purpose is that the humane treatment of animals is a fundamental value of the people of the state of Florida. Now this court has been very clear for decades that what a proposed amendment's ballot language needs to do is it needs to disclose the chief legal effect, not the policy motivation of a proposal. 
and a statement of purpose is not legally effective. Um, the respondents uh, have tried to argue that under the uh, controlling standard that this court set forth in Gray um, against uh, Bryant uh, back in 1960, which has been the law of the state for, for decades, <clears throat> that somehow this statement of purpose will have an impact on uh, certain aspects of the industry, uh, of well, the animal I, I industry. Could, I could see how one would look at the Constitution and say, assuming this amendment passed, and look at the Constitution and then say, well, the humane treatment of animals is a fundamental value of the people of the state of Florida, and we're treating some animal in a certain way, and therefore it's a violation of the Constitution. Why, why isn't that a, 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 an argument that really could be made about this ballot language? Justice Quince, to be clear, there is an operative legal effect in the amendment that deals with animal welfare. Or I mean, at least I they can fairly see, be you said. You could see that people might be interested in getting rid of greyhound racing, but they may not be interested in declaring that the humane treatment of animals is a fundamental value. Sure. A couple of points, Justice Quince. Um, first, this court has been very clear that ballot language need only and, and should only disclose the legal effect of the measure. So regardless what this declaration uh, might say, what its breadth might be, I don't think there's any argument about the breadth of the fundamental value statement. I think that the argument here is about whether it has any legal effect. And this court has made plain since at least Gray against Bryant in 1960 that in order to be uh, legally effective, constitutional language has to provide a rule a mechanism by which it can be enforced. And the statement that, uh, the, fundament, that uh, the animal welfare is a fundamental value of, of the people uh, doesn't provide any judicially enforceable content. And of course, the legislature already has all authority to enact uh, any manner of uh, animal welfare policy. So it's not adding any power to the legislature. Um, as, <clears throat> as to your second question, the, con the Constitution Revision Commission, I think, had ample reason uh, to uh, choose the course that it did. This court has approved ballot language that declined uh, to address a prefatory statement of purpose, uh, and that is uh, in limited marine net fishing. Uh, the ballot language in that case uh, made no mention of uh, the amendment's text, uh, the first statement of the amendment's text, which said that the state's marine resources belong to the people and should be conserved and managed for the benefit of the state, its people, and future generations. And this court approved that ballot language because it disclosed the chief purpose, which it said was the chief I effect. noticed one of my favorite amendments was the uh, treatment of uh, pigs during pregnancy. And uh, that's section 21 of Article 10. And interestingly, that has, as a statement, inhumane treatment of animals is a concern of Florida citizens. And then it goes on. Mm -hmm. Actually, that statement is also in the ballot summary. But uh, it's the question I guess I have for you is whether or not it might elevate uh, some other rights because it's in this amendment. The question really is, uh, should it have to be disclosed in the ballot summary, right? So that's the question. Sure. Disclosure of these types of uh, statements of purpose is actually somewhat perilous under this court's precedent. Um, uh, and in particular, I'm looking to uh, the uh, land use plans case in which this court struck ballot language, which accurately quoted and paraphrased a prefatory statement of purpose regarding the importance of local participation in, uh, or public participation in local uh, land use planning. And what this court said was that that statement of purpose, even though it appeared in the text of the amendment itself, that that was political or editorial language. And this court, citing Evans against Firestone, which is the case in which this court made clear that the chief purpose of a, of a proposed amendment consists only of its legal effect, not as policy motivation. This court relied on Evans to strike that ballot language. It might actually be the reverse, that if they had put in the language that's a fundamental value in humane treatment of animals, it would have appealed to a broader group of people who may not particularly care one way or another about greyhound racing, but care about the broader value. So I could see the reverse argument being made if that had been included in this ballot. So do you understand what I'm saying? I, I think I do, Justice Periente. Uh, but again, this court's precedent has made clear that this court is very concerned with two things uh, in this context. Number one, it's concerned uh, with disclosing the chief 
legal effect of the measure. And number two, it's concerned that uh, voters could be uh, prompted to vote based on the why rather than the what of an amendment. And this court has made plain that it doesn't want voters to be casting their votes simply based on the why. It wants them to be focused on the what. And the what is the legal effect of the amendment. Um, so uh, this court has approved ballot language that has disclosed prefatory purpose statements, but it's also disapproved them. And um, you know, what one, I think, could fairly say that the safest course when confronted with an amendment that contains a prefatory purpose statement but that has no independent legal effect is actually to omit disclosure so that we're not politicizing the amendment process. We're simply disclosing to the voters what the legal effect is so that they can vote based on that. Because again, what the voters are concerned you, about. You can keep going, but you are now into your rebuttal time. I'll, I'll go ahead and if the court has no further questions, I'll just reserve the remainder and pick up there. Thank you. Thank you. May it please the court, I'm Major Harding, and with me is Kevin Forstoffel, Jeff Kotkamp, and Steve Emanuel. <coughs> Thank you for the opportunity to be here. There are three separate and independent reasons why this court should find the ballot language inadequate and should strike the ballot from the November election. First, the ballot language uh, in Amendment 13 does fail to disclose the chief purpose, declare the humane treatment of animals a fundamental value, and also to decouple the licensure of card rooms, which has been an issue in the state of Florida for years, uh, from uh, uh, slight, uh, slot machines uh, and card rooms uh, to decouple the licensure from Greyhound uh, racing. It does not disclose that. How does it not if it says other gaming activities are not affected? Well, the, this court has said that if a, um, an amendment impacts another amendment of the Constitution, it must be noticed and, and given notice to the people. In this situation, Article 10, Section 23 was passed, and it allowed gaming in dog racing in Miami-Dade and Broward County only if the people of those counties authorized it to take place. They constitutionally connected those two uh, uh, events, dog racing and casinos. They constitutionally connected, and here we are constitutionally disconnecting those, and the court has said that that needs to be disclosed in the ballot title and summary. But, but, and I mean, so, to, to Justice Perriente's question, if it is a constitutional disconnection by saying that there's no more uh, commercial dog racing um, and there, the other gambling will continue as authorized and be unaffected, why isn't that a clear statement that they are being decoupled? Because well, one is going away and one is staying. That would be if, it, if it is a clear statement to, to that effect, yes. But still, the court has said that if it affects uh, the, another section of the Constitution, it needs to be disclosed. But it's not and, affecting it. Huh? How is it affecting it? It is disconnecting racing from uh, casinos and establishing freestanding casinos in the state of Florida which has been rejected on a ballot, uh, I think, at least three times uh, over the course of years. So let me see if, if I understand you correctly. You're saying that presently casinos are only operated in connection with Greyhound racing. Is, is that what yes. you're saying? Paramutual. OK. Facility. And so by getting rid of the Greyhound racing, we are now, without voter approval, basically having freestanding casinos. Is, is, that's your argument. Yes. Okay. And, and that, and that and at least should be disclosed to uh, the, the voter. voting public that now we are having the freestanding casinos because we're, uh, they were first just a part of Greyhound Racing facilities. Yes. 
The second uh, reason that this court I, should. I, I'm sorry. Uh, what section of the Constitution is that? Article 10, Section 23. The second ballot language of Amendment 13 is affirmatively misleading because it fails to advise Florida voters that it would enshrine in the state constitution a broad fundamental declaration that the humane treatment of animals is the fundamental value of the people of the state of Florida. And what legal effect, since you heard the argument, it, would that prefatory statement have? And if, wouldn't it be up to the court in a subsequent case to decide whether it had any legal effect or not? Uh, and so I'm concerned that you're saying, well, it must do that, but I don't think it does that. You know, it's a, it's, as the uh, so Assistant Solicitor General says, it's a uh, focusing on something that people care about, which is humane treatment of animals, just like, but it's not saying, it's not giving an independent right that's unassociated with the, tree, the uh, greyhound racing. So well, explain well, how that should have been in the, I think what you're saying is you're saying that must be a chief purpose and therefore it should have said it's phasing out commercial dog racing, other gaming activities are not affected and establishing the inhumane treatment of animals as a fundamental constitutional right in the state of Florida, even though the full text really deals just with uh, dog racing. The uh, fundamental uh, value language, I think, does have legal effect, and although it may not contain detailed enforceable standard, it is an expression of society's consensus, and I can assure you, as has been mentioned, will be cited as authority in future cases dealing with... Uh, but that's okay, but that's not really our concern here because the issue still for me is if I'm a voter and I care about inhumane treatment of animals, I might think there shouldn't be any horse racing, uh, but I'm not... It's, it's going to only... Putting that in would actually have more people voting for it, it would seem to me. So I'm not sure how Assuming. leaving it out is misleading. You understand what I'm saying? You know, we're not looking at, is it hiding the ball or is it? Well, Justice Periante, this court has said that um, the fundamental value language in the education amendment was a critical component of the amendment. Well, Secondly, in Bush v. Holmes, if you're talking about Bush v. Holmes, not because that was a constitutional revision commission amendment that never came to this court. Would you agree with that? That was a 20 year yeah. ago. Okay. Yes. In Bush v. Holmes, uh, the, first of all, it, it was interpreting uh, the constitutional amendment, and in that amendment, it links the fundamental value to the second part, which is that, let's see, I had it someplace. Uh, that it's a, pre a precept of the state of Florida to have uh, good education for all. In other words, it linked the two together. In, there was a prefatory statement and then there was a statement. But it wasn't in the context of a ballot summary. That so could you respond to how that helps your case? The, but, the, but it was in the ballot summary of the um, education amendment. It was in the ballot title and it was in the ballot summary. It was the first line of the amendment and here it is the first line. And in addition to this court having said that it was a critical component of the amendment, it also put the amendment uh, by the, uh, was put in by the CRC to make sure that education was known to the people as a fundamental value. And in addition to that, but, it had a, but, but the two statements had to do with education, not with a, a more specific statement as here, which has to do with dog racing. Well, no, uh, in, Justice isn't it, Perry. Isn't it, isn't it true in the, uh, in the constitutional amendment you're talking about relating to public education, after it talks about a fundamental value, it goes on to say, more specifically, it is therefore a paramount duty of the state to make adequate provision. That's what it, and the, and the, 
the argument about that amendment is really always focused on what does that mean. Isn't that correct? As opposed to the fundamental value. That's, that's kind of that's kind of window dressing. You, you get beyond that, and there's more. But let me also refer to the case uh, that has been mentioned about uh, the local comprehensive plan. The court there stated that addressing the inhumane treatment of animals in the pregnant pig case was not only the sponsor's reason for advancing this amendment, it was also the chief purpose of the amendment. And in addition to so that... So are you saying since... So if that's there, then we already have the fundamental value of uh, treatment of animals humanely already in the Constitution, if you say that has <laughs> some legal effect. But the Peter will, will not know that they are incorporating that in the Constitution if it is not in the ballot title and the summary, because that is all that is on the ballot, Justice Perriente. And I, I'm, I would still, like I'm still struggling to understand your assertion that this language has any legal effect, actual legal effect. It sounds like you're not asserting that it is self-executing. Is that correct? You, you don't think that this would prohibit conduct in the state of Florida directly? It's not self-executing, right? Probably not, but okay. let me... Let and then, so if it's not self-executing, I think you're right, um, then that would require the legislature to do something in order to, to make it, to, to, to make, give it legal effect. Does this allow the legislature to do anything that it can't already do, or does it prevent the legislature from doing anything? No, but I will say... Okay, so if it doesn't have a direct legal effect because it's not self-executing, it doesn't have an indirect legal effect, what, how could it possibly have a legal effect? With due respect, sir, the people ought to know. And, uh, and if a language similar to this has been declared chief purpose, and if language similar to this has been declared critical, uh, and that the people were, uh, it was in there for the purpose of clarifying to the people. And I would like also, well, if let, you Let me just can, follow up. If, if something, if you can't identify a legal effect, then it sounds like political rhetoric. It's just, you know, a, a fluff label. And we have cases that say you can't put political rhetoric on a ballot summary. So, it, it, I mean, I, th I think that if they had put it on, your argument would be that it has no legal effect and, and it's political rhetoric and it should come off, isn't that? I would like, if, if the court would permit me to uh, read from a recent article in the Florida Bar Journal, the animal law section of the Florida Bar stated this, there is no better place for the evolution of the law to be enshrined and I wanted to make sure I understood what enshrined was and looked up the definition and it said to be made permanent, i.e. a constitution. But the law historically views animals as personal property and we come to understand more about animals. The law, the law is shifting towards more humane view that recognizes distinction between living and sentiment beings and other forms of personal property. Future generations will be able to point to the change in the Florida Constitution as an important shift in the way animals are treated and an example of our social and moral progress. And surely, the evolution in the law, the shift in the law, and a change in the Constitution indicate an Im a legal effect that the people will expect to be carried out by the courts and by the, uh, and by well, the wouldn't, legislature. Wouldn't the situation be here somewhat different if the reference was to a fundamental right as opposed to a fundamental value? Because when we think, we think about fundamental rights, we think that brings to mind the possibility of enforcement. Yes. A fundamental value without more really does not bring to mind uh, the idea of enforcement. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm sure there are some people that would view the adoption of this amendment and the prohibition of uh, the dog racing as a, as a step forward. 
um, in the humane treatment of animals and something that might set a precedent for further public policy development in the future. But that's a different matter than this legal matter on which this argument here depends. It, it, but also, uh, Mr. Chief Justice, the language does not enshrine uh, a, this broad declaration only to dog racing. But here is my problem, again, and I appreciate and I echo what Justice Kennedy is saying. You had, you know, 20, 15 years ago, we're not going to confine pregnant pigs. Now, 20 years later, we're going to not allow uh, wagering on dog racing. So between those two, now we're, are you saying that the Constitutional Revision Commission intended by putting this language in the amendment, that the humane, humane treatment of animals is a fundamental value, they intended for this amendment to go beyond the, the dog racing and provide a constitutional right for animals in the state of Florida, that that was their intent? Because that's what you're saying, it should have been in the chief purpose. Does it, can you, reading this amendment as a whole, see that it was broader than just greyhound racing yes. wagering it talks about animals and it uh and the uh, the only the title and the summary uh, relate to dog racing and uh, no, but i'm asking you if okay let's just assume again that it said in the ballot summary that humane treatment of animals is a fundamental value and i don't know anyone that thinks that it's good to have inhumane treatment of animals, even if they're not dog lovers. So the question I have, if it had been in there, are you saying that this constitutional amendment was intended to go beyond wagering on dog racing to affect all types of wagering on all types of dogs, cats, rabbits, uh, horses? Uh, yes, and I, I think that that is adequately referred uh, to and, um, and emphasized in the statement by the Florida Bar uh, Animal Law Well, we'll section. all be looking forward to that first case if we'll this amendment goes on. We'll all be looking forward to that first case. And, of course, we have, the, have and according in the public, uh, now issues regarding zoos and, and circuses and the treatment of animals in those. And, and I am certain that this court will be seeing, uh, uh, and the legislature will be seeing, uh, lots of legal implications as a result of this. But why would you want to instill in the Constitution of the state of Florida a statement involving the fundamental value of an item and not disclose that to the public to the voter. Why would you want to include such a significant statement, a statement that has been talked about as critical, a statement that has been talked about as the chief purpose, and not disclose it? But who talked about it as the chief purpose? That's what I'm trying to understand what you're. In the referenda required for adoption and amendment of the local government comprehensive plan in 2005, the court stated that addressing the inhumane treatment of animals in the pregnant pig case was not only the sponsor's reason for advancing the amendment, but it was also the chief purpose of the amendment itself. And the fundamental value language in the educational amendment and the language in the pregnant pig amendment were in the ballot title and summary. And, uh, and we think that it is not only misleading, but it is inappropriate for the voter to be required to say yay or nay to such a, a fundamental value without being given notice that they are doing so. And so we certainly think that that is a a good and valid reason for the purpose and of, uh, of striking this from the, uh, uh, from the ballot. And so in the minute I have left, I would say 
that the, there is a significant decoupling in the constitutional amendment of the constitutional coupling of the voter of the, and we are, you, uh, if this passes, there will be in effect a vote for freestanding casinos in the state of Florida. And they have always been denied by the voter uh, when it, as I understand, uh, when it's been put on the ballot. But also it, is a, it will be uh, decoupling the, uh, that was not only in, by the Constitution, but it was also uh, by a voter, by the voters of Miami-Dade and to say that no other gaming is unaffected, it's affected, uh, I think is, is false and would require the court to strike this from the ballot. I see that my time is up. Thank you very much. So I'd like to pick back up where my uh, distinguished friend on the other side left off, which is the slots issue. Um, the respondents have made uh, an accurate and a critical concession on this issue, which we believe forecloses their argument that there would be some undisclosed change to the constitutional status quo. The respondents have agreed with the petitioners that Article 10, Section 23 does not impose a freestanding statewide constitutional coupling requirement for slot machines and prairie mutual facilities. What it does do is that it establishes the authority of two counties, Broward and Miami-Dade, to by local referendum Countywide referendum authorize slot machines in Perry Mutual facilities that existed in 2004. That authorization has already occurred, and to the extent that there is any sort of coupling requirement that's referred to in Article 10, Section 23, that requirement relates only to the authority that was granted in that amendment to two counties. The respondents have conceded. Can I be sure that I, they understand the practical implications of, of that last statement? And that is, is that for Dade and Broward counties, those facilities that are now allowed pursuant to the vote of the local citizens to have card rooms or whatever else they have, if they have certain paramutual uh, activities going on, they were allowed to have that kind of license. So now what this does and what this is saying is that there's no longer the requirement in Dade and Broward counties apparently only that it be coupled with some other kind of activity that those individuals can conduct their gaming card rooms, uh, slot machines, whatever, without that predicate. That's what this does effectively. Correct, Justice Lewis. And, other no, other gaming... place, and no other place in the state of Florida, but just those two counties. Well, not exactly, Justice well, Lewis. Okay, so, tell, tell me sure. exactly then. So to be very precise, um, there is by statute not by constitution, but by statute, which the legislature has chosen to enact, a coupling requirement for card rooms and for slots. So what the legislature has said is that although the legislature has authority to do what it wants with regard to slot policy, the legislature could authorize slots in gas stations, restaurants, wherever. The legislature has said, as a matter of policy, we don't want to do that. We would like to keep them paired to parimutuel facilities. Uh, Section 551.102, uh, subparagraph 4, uh, specifically authorizes uh, slots and uh, slot machine gaming in um, uh, facilities that are perimutual facilities outside of Miami-Dade and Broward County. It says that as long as a county is a home rule county, a county as defined in Chapter 125 of Florida statutes, that that county can have slots. So in Florida, slots aren't confined simply to the two counties uh, expressed in Amendment 10, Section 23. And the reason for that is that Amendment, uh, excuse me, Article 10, Section 23, relates only to the county's own authority to authorize their own slot machines. And that's an authority that's only granted to Miami-Dade and to Broward counties. Well, but explain it for the, the, of the 12 Greyhound racing facilities in the state of Florida, I mean, you have one I know in Palm Beach County. That's not, is, will they be able to continue to have these other these slot machines? Or can the legislature then go and change the statute and say because you're not you don't have a paramutual uh, wagering for live racing we're not going to allow this 
So without this proposed amendment, so if this, it, it just ignoring this proposed amendment and just asking about the legislature's authority, outside of Miami, Dade, and Broward County, the legislature can do what it wants. It can decouple, it can ban, it can expand. That's an authority that the legislature has. And in fact, the respondents have correctly conceded that the legislature has the authority to do exactly what this uh, proposed amendment would do, which is um, to, uh, to uh, amend statutory law to decouple. And of course, this court has made very plain that voters don't need to be told every statute that would be abrogated by a proposed amendment, because doing so would be very difficult within the limitations of but a 75 But vote. what is the language, the failure to conduct Greyhound racing or wagering on Greyhound racing after December 31st, 2018, does not constitute grounds to revoke or deny renewal of other related gaming licenses held by a person who is a licensed Greyhound permit holder. Does it give the authority affirmatively that the, the is the legislature precluded from revoking the licenses of those that are no longer conducting live Greyhound racing? This is not an issue that's discussed in the briefing, um, so I, I don't think that I can give you a definitive answer. That would involve an interpretation, but I, I think what I can tell you is that what this court would look to is whether the language contains language of limitation on the powers of the legislature. Um, this amendment makes very clear that the operation of this amendment is to leave in place to leave unaffected other gaming activities. And that effect of this amendment, that undisputed effect of this amendment, is plainly disclosed to the voters uh, in as much as they're told that other gaming activities won't be affected. I see that I've run out of my time, but I'm happy to answer any additional questions that the court might have. We thank you both for your arguments.